Okay, so this is uh, pretty much the setup that I use to create the effect. Uh, so for the import container, I use an agent soft to import my mixable character. And uh, so right now, this is a pack agent which only have one prim and one point. And all we have to do right now is to convert this uh, character into a real mask. And to do that, we need a combination of these two nodes, uh, the convert and uh, the unpack. And um, just so you know, these two nodes have the default settings. So you, you just need to uh, uh, drop down the convert and the unpack and they will work instantly. And uh, after that, I use a node here and I name this to our character because I may need to uh, reference this character later on. So it's worth to do that. And after that, an attribute delete is used to uh, remove all of the unnecessary attributes that we don't need to accomplish the effect. Uh, so for instance, like agent name and bone capture. Uh, and um, since we only need to uh, simulate the effect on the sort, uh, I use a split node here to uh, split uh, to separate between the sort and uh, uh, and the other things. And um, and actually, I only want to Sorry, I only want the effect to happen on the blade. So I use a blast node here to uh, isolate the blade and a polyfill to fill this hole. And um, finally, I use a node here and I name this to our sort modify. All right, so let's go up and dive inside the setup container. So as you can see right here, this is fairly simple setup and nothing is too complex. And uh, just so you know, on the nodes that I set up right here is for creating the smoke and the other is for particles which i will uh, cover in the next tutorial so first thing first i use an object merge to reference this node right here so uh, you can just use an object merge and copy this node and paste it to the object tab all right so uh, to make the source for the smoke to oper operate smoothly uh, you will need to have a uh, your magic with higher poly cows. So to do that, you can either use a subdivide saw and alter the algorithm to like open subdivide veneer and increase the depth to five or so. So the poly cow will go from nine points to like 8,000 points. But I prefer using the scatter method, which will scatter a bunch of points on, onto the surface of the blade. Uh, and in this case, I use 3,000 points. All right, so after that, I use a node here and name this to scatter. Uh, an attribute rango is here to declare an uh, ID attribute, which will uh, equal to point number, the PT num. And after that, I threw a, a rest stop here uh, to store the position of the points on the first frame. And uh, on the first frame and uh, this state is uh, extremely uh, important because uh, we will need this or this information to apply some uh, not to apply some noises later on next i use two journals but how they work is vastly different the first one is for computing the velocity which is one of the factors that determine how the smoke moves and the second one is for subtle optimization since we are dealing with a fast moving object and in this case it's our sort we will face a huge problem which is the interrupted sourcing and as you can see in this video uh, we have the smoke following the sort on this frame, on this frame, but there is nothing in between. So we will, we will have to find a way to uh, fill in this gap. So right now we are on the frame 61, and basically what this show that is to create exactly all of this point, but on the previous frame, which is 60. So if I were to scroll to the timeline, you can see this show node will automatically create uh, a past version of this uh, source uh, for every single frame. And I will fill this gap by using this app soft. And on the polygons and by group tab, I set the app method to by attribute. And the attribute name is ID, which is an attribute we already declare over here. Okay, so we definitely want to increase the resolution of this line. And to do that, we will use an, uh, uh, a resample soft. And I set the length to point, uh, 0.02. And um, finally, um, I said uh, I use an an ad shop here to delete all of these lines, but only keep the points. In order to make the smoke simulation to operate properly, we need to prepare some fields such as density, temperature, and velocity. So in this case, we only need the density as the main sourcing, 
and we don't really need the temperature as we want the uh, volume motion is fully controlled by the velocity. So first thing first, I use an attribute variable here to declare a density value to be equal one for each particle. So um, later on, I will rasterize this element into a uh, density PTB. So after that, I use uh, an uh, attribute noise here to uh, uh, make the shape become more interesting by noising the position of each particle a bit. And I also run another attribute noise here, but in this case, it's uh, the density uh, value. So if I were to turn on this visualization, uh, you can see the red area here is for is where the density value is equal to 1, the blue is where the density is equal to 0, and uh, y is something in between. And finally, I will rasterize this um, uh, this uh, this particle into a uh, VDB, or rather the uh, density VDB. And um, I also rasterize the, uh, this trail here into the velocity VDB. Uh, but right now you can uh, you cannot really see anything, so I I will use the volume slide and uh, the volume trail, and I connect them together. So you can see the velocity field work perfectly. So let's move on to create a custom velocity field. Why we need to do that? If I only let the velocity field that we created before to fully determine how the smoke move, uh, sometimes when this character swing his sword from A to B really quickly, uh, it will push the sorry the smoke will be pushed outward, and we don't really want that. And uh, so let me capture this. So we want the smoke will uh, to follow this sword perfectly, regardless how it moves. So let's uh, die inside Houdini to see how we can uh, create this. Back inside Houdini, you can see this uh, velocity field is rasterized directly from this trail node without any noises. So we might need to add some uh, into uh, this uh, custom field setup. So basically what I did here, uh, let me open pane to illustrate this for you guys easier. Okay, so if I were to draw a uh, simple plate here, Okay, I want this uh, velo the velocity value is higher in this area, and the lower uh, and the lower has the lower velocity value, so it will contribute to the uh, to the overall shape of the effect, which is a uh, longer trail at the tip of the plate, uh, like the, the reference that I saw here. To do that, I want to set a mass value from 0 to 1 along the sort. However, this is an animated mass, so it will be a real pain to do that. So the solution that I came up with is to create exactly this source, but in a static version. So let's see how I did that. So first of all, I use an object merge to get this uh, as modified, and then I freeze it in the first frame using the expression S star. Uh, this transform node is used to bring this geometry to the origin by clicking on the both centroid to, or, to origin. Next, I use a lap straighten to uh, straighten the sort up on the YC and there is not a built-in Houdini node, so just make sure to install the lap node, sorry, the lap node uh, in order to follow this tutorial uh, properly. Now, uh, next, I uh, select this scatter sort and I'll uh, click on the uh, action, uh, create the res reference copy, and I drag this scatter to this stream, uh, and then I declare a ID attribute which is equal to BT num. So this particle in this uh, in this static version will have the same number of points and the ID attribute as the anim as the animated version. Um, and this mass size is just to uh, bring this uh, all of these particles onto on the ground. And finally, I use a point warp to uh, define a mass value from zero to one along the along along the YC. So let's die inside. Uh, it's uh, pretty simple. First of all, I use a red dip to bounding box to. Um, Connect to the P to the to the P, and the output of this node will be always uh, the ramp from zero to one, 
and since we only uh, set a mask from uh, sorry set the mask on the OIC uh, I might need to uh, use this vector to float to only get the OIC and I uh, filter that uh, through a RAM and uh, the result of all of this node will be output to uh, a mass uh, attribute and I uh, drop down a uh, by export and call this uh, to mass uh, attribute and the time is float all right so let's go up and once we have set the mass attribute that we need we want to transfer the attribute to the original source so let's drop down an attribute copy here and I set the attribute to mask as ID and uh, the attribute that we want to copy as CD and mask and just so you know the CD is just for visualizing so if I were to press G on the keyboard you can see the mask attribute will follow this uh, uh, this source perfectly all right so let's so next i use an attribute copy uh, as a way to manipulate the velocity sorry the velocity so let that inside uh, so first thing first i imported uh, the mass attribute and i free ran it from uh, 0 to 1 to uh, per 6 to 1 so the lower always have a certain value uh, rather than 0 okay and i multiply it with the uh, with the original V and um, I also multiply it with uh, another parameter which plays as the the overall multiplier and after that I set up two noises uh, the first one is uh, the 1D noise and um, uh, and I use a, a, a turbulent noise for that and this will noise up the, am the amplitude of its velocity vector and um, the other one uh, is the uh, is a 3D noise and um, and I use an uh, a, a flow noise to noise up the direction of uh, the vectors. And uh, finally, I plan the I plan it back with uh, the original V by using the mix node. And I set the bias value to 0.525. And um, and and the final result was connected to the V output. And you can visualize the velocity that we have just created by clicking on the visualization icon and set it to V okay so uh, in, in order to make our custom v field to work uh, decently we want to create a domain uh, for that and um, first thing first i imported our character and uh, i want to know how last the v field actually ends up so i use uh, these two times shift node uh, the first one i set it to the frame start and the second one i set it to uh, the, the the frame end and um and I merge them together, and I also uh, uh, create a bow, a bow around it, and um, I also add some extra bettings to uh, make sure that uh, this character will always stay uh, inside this box. And um, after that, I convert it to a uh, fork VDB and uh, sc uh, scatter around uh, 60k thousand points. All right, and um. Finally, I want to transfer the custom V that we have just created to the domain, uh, but uh, we want to uh, accumulate the, v the velocity over time. So that's why this software uh, comes to play. And inside this, uh, this is pretty simple. And I must uh, the the input tool, uh, which means the custom V uh, and the breath frame together. And um, and I change and I use a a, a point four to transfer the V to the domain and um and the PC open and the PC footer here uh you know works pretty much the same as the attribute transfer but it's much faster and uh to recap again this software will uh, uh accumulate the velo the velocity over time so if I were to grab only the point four here and paste this to the shop level and i plug the domain to the first input the second one is for the velocity and you can see right here the velocity will only be transferred uh, to the domain at the current frame next i catch the result of the software and i wanted to expand the influence of the v field to make sure that it will capture all of the smoke so I use two granular nodes to split between the area that has, you know, high uh, V value and the area that don't, and I transfer it back. And um, after that, I merge them together, and I also run another point, velo point velocity to add some uh, color noise, and finally rasterize it into a uh, 
VVDB. Once we have created three fields for the smoke seam, let's plug all of them together to the .NET and let's dive inside. And I created three volume sources. Uh, and I, the first one is uh, I name it to the density, uh, V, and custom value. And um, uh, I also order the the input to the first context geometry, the second and the third respectively to the third input sorry respectively to the three inputs that we collected outside and also um uh, since we only want the effect to be finished uh before frame 65 i set an, an, an uh, expression which is uh, dollar frame less than uh, 65 and i copy this uh, to uh, the other uh, volume sources and um for the source scale for the density i set it to point uh, to one point two uh, the V is um zero zero eight five and uh, the custom value is uh zero point three. As I want this custom value to be dominant over this one. And for the pyro solver spa, uh, in the same tab, I set the dissipation to point zero eight five. As I want the smoke uh, would be uh would be dissipated uh, really quickly, and I increase uh, increase the mass sub step to two, and added some uh macro solvers uh, the turbulence is for big noises and the vortex confinement is for adding some uh, vortex uh, motion and guard disturb is um is for you know adding some micro uh, details to the smoke and i set the smoke um the sorry the fossil side to polio 2 and added some uh, sorry add uh, and added a ground plane to play as uh, uh, our collision for the smoke seam so this is the result after all of the hard work that we did today and you can see that the smoke motion and shape look very interesting and decent and this will make a huge contribution to the overall shape of our particle seam and yeah i think it's very much for our tutorial today and i will cover the particle seam in the next one and i believe it will be a very you know a much more informative and interesting lesson so if you like this, this tutorial please uh, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And that is a wrap and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.